I'm going to discuss with you how a lab report would be written for a you know, regular science class or an AP science class. And the first thing to realize is that there will be a, a title page, and that will be a separate page in the very front of your lab report, the very first thing. And then that includes the title of the lab, your name, the period you have the class, the date it's due, and the instructor name. And that's very simple. And again, that's a separate page. It's kind of like the first page of your lab report. This is the only page that has to be separate. Everything else can just kind of flow together. So let's move on. And the next page, you'll notice that there are you know, titles of each section that you have. So a purpose would be the first thing you do. And in this, you're going to describe the main goal of the lab and how it's going to be achieved. Okay, and this particular lab is about Ohm's Law. So the main purpose of this is to discover the relationship between voltage and a resistor and current through an own, own resistor in order to determine the resistor's value. So notice how we're determining the resistance, but really, how are we doing it? It's through uh, voltage and current. So always have a purpose statement, what the goal of the lab is, and how it's going to be accomplished. Next, procedures. Procedures have been simplified to refer to the lab handout you know, by whoever it is and provide a proper source. In this case, handout was provided by an instructor, and there's the name of it. Okay, but if it's a separate source that it comes from, you know, just use regular uh, formatting for the source for that. If there are any calculations in the lab, that comes next. And in here, please notice how the purpose of the calculation is there. And when you do this, you have numbers and proper units, and then you show the final units when you're done and follow all significant digit rules. Here, we have a, a current we're trying to find, and there's a voltage, and there's ohms, and then one more time, there's the final answer. And make sure you're obeying proper significant digit rules. Next section, a lab report, is going to be data. And there are two types of data you can have. Mostly, I would suppose, it would be a table and a graph. So again, here's our data uh, title for the section. And when you label a table, make sure it occurs on top of the table. So this is table one, you know, describe what the data is useful for. So voltage and current in a ceramic resistor. Please notice how the data is tabulated and on the top of each column, uh, the name of the data and the units that are associated with it. So voltage, of course, voltage is a unit for that, and current, in this case, milliamps. And then the values that you need to provide. If you need to place a graph in there, please notice how all the proper labels and units are included in chart title and any statistics that's appropriate. And right here, we have a line of best fit, R squared of one to a couple sig figs, I suppose, or one sig fig. And then there is a, a figure label again to describe what the graph is about. So this is figure one, graph of resistor and voltage, you know, et cetera, in terms of you know, what the purpose is for the actual graph. It gives the reader a chance to quickly know what the graph is for. After data, it does come to conclusion time. So there are always three paragraphs to the conclusions. Paragraph one is a theory discussion of the lab. Paragraph two is a discussion of results. And paragraph three is error analysis. You know, on this, if you uh, take a look at this, it's like resistance and electrical circuit is the slowing down of charge carriers due to the structure and composition. You know, I'm not going to read all of that, but you get an idea. It's a description of what's going on in theory with the lab. And then something specific then to this experiment in an experiment uh, a ceramic resistor was used to show the relationship between current to a resistor, you know, et cetera, and that. But you kind of get an idea that we have a general idea for the theory, then, you know, what really was occurring in this lab. And then notice how next a graph of voltage drop versus the current. So specifically now, what techniques were used in order to determine your result and, and what result are we actually going to have here? So once the data was analyzed, the direct relationship between voltage and current was observed, confirming the nature of Ohm's law. So that first paragraph is a description of the theory of the lab, but also how does it tie to the lab that you're doing and uh, what techniques are going to be used. Paragraph two is a discussion of result. And here you're describing, you know, in this case, what your results were. And notice how they're actually numerically mentioned here uh, and the units. And then any kind of statistic, R squared of one for the graph. Uh, any percent errors, 
and any description of what was going on in the lab you know since each resistor made by the manufacturer cannot be made identically it's reasonable to expect a small percent error for this experiment okay so it's it's not quite error analysis yet which is our third paragraph but just you know how do the results look you know are you approving what you're trying to solve for are you suggesting or offering you know positive relationships with what you expected to see or is this data not really you know showing that clear relationship so that's a discussion of results and lastly error analysis be very passive when writing these and you know avoid things like human error or calculation errors because you know those kind of errors should be fixed you know but you can mention you know maybe a meter you know causes a fluctuation in the actual results because the meter disturbs your experiment you know in this case here you know it's saying that the ohm meter itself that was used to make measurement has its own tolerance you know meaning that it could be off of you know a certain percentage from the actual result and, and those kind of errors explain you know why you're not getting a percent error of zero but again keep error analysis very passive you know don't say there's a lot of errors in this lab just suggest reasonable reasons of why your percent error is not zero and a lot of times you know it just could be like measurement errors in terms of there's always some variation in terms of how an instrument measures a tolerance or something like that and that's your lab report you know not not too difficult more succinct than in the past but also uh, gives the reader a, a good chance to see what you've done and uh, what kind of errors existed and how good your results are